He said, we're gonna do something to your brain. Two fuzzy ducks, it's dead air 22. What the hell am I talking about, Christina thinks. Bingo, it's bingo, two fat ladies. Anyway, so this time we've all oh, we've got so much to talk about. We've got a, a bizarre and funny and sad Elon Musk interview, uh, an enraging and sad Felicity Huffman interview, Squid Game game, a Squid Game game, and other stuff too. Bethesda, Fallout 4. Bethesda and you're Bethesda, wrong. Maryland. Bethesda. Yeah, Germantown. Mm. <laughs> uh -huh. Hi. Hi, how are you? We missed you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we missed you. We're back. Yeah. So, hop right into it. Yes. Yes. No, let's just look at each other for a bit. Well, we do do that sometimes, so. <laughs> the evil that I do do. Um, <laughs> okay, so, uh, Elon Musk interview at New York Times Deal Book Summit. This was recent. Um, what was the interview about, and did you enjoy it? What was the interview about? It was just, hey, Elon Musk, let's have a chat. Yeah, um, I mean, he did bring up... Uh, the whichever it was one of the Sorkins who was interviewing him. Aaron Ross Sorkin. No, Andrew, Andrew Ross. Andrew Ross, Ross Sorkin. Sorkin. Yes, that one. Um, he did ask questions about, yeah, you know, what's going on at Twitter? What's going on with the ad stuff? People said you made anti-Semitic stuff. So, yeah. and then um, pretty much just long extended uh, non-responses from Musk. Um, not answering the question and being generally weird was my takeaway. Uh, it's an hour and a half interview and yeah, it's rather general in its topics. And it, it, I mean, I was going to say it becomes increasingly more unhinged, at least in terms of his meandering. But no, it starts off pretty hostile. I think it's the 10 or 11 minute mark where he says to go fuck yourself advertisers. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the exact quote? I don't know. Um, that was more or less it. Go fuck yourselves. And, and looking at the crowd, like, waiting for applause. There's a lot of... It doesn't happen. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, like, saying something and then, like, looking, you know, waiting for a reaction. Um, and it's, like, more or less dead silence from the audience through the entire thing. And he gets a amazing. few claps. But... Yeah, yeah, here and there. But not the um, standing ovation, perhaps, that his facial expression implied he wanted. Because if it was me in that crowd and no one was clapping, I'd start clapping. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've done that before on planes. Oh, yeah? I'm the one who starts clapping. And almost always I can get it going. Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah. Clapping for what? Thank you for not there. crashing the plane. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that a thing? Uh, yeah, it's the thing I encountered and I thought, I'm going to spread this. Like a disease. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, why not? Um, <laughs> because it's annoying. And, yeah. you know. Yeah, why not, I there's suppose. More yeah, there's more annoying things that could be happening on planes. Yeah, yeah. So. It seems pretty harmless, doesn't it? Yeah. You're not singing through the whole flight or, uh, yeah. you know, getting drunk and shouting at people not being real. So I don't want to see any of that unless it's Jared Depardieu. Oh, yeah. No, that'd be worth it then. What was the story about? You don't even have to share it, but... Because we're talking about Elon Musk, but now you want me to talk about Jared Deputy's piss story. <laughs> it was something from years ago, like maybe 20 years ago, where he was in, like, in first class and they were on the runway for ages for some reason. Mm -hmm. And when you're on the runway, you can't leave your seat. Mm -hmm. And he was sloshed and was like, I really need to go piss. Mm -hmm. like, you can't. He's like, I will piss myself then. And like, did. Yeah, yeah. And, and did. <laughs> He seems funny. And then what? And then travelled like the next eight hours in piss-soaked chinos. Yeah. Yeah. I have made my point to stand by. <laughs> yeah, I like Gerald Duffy. Yeah. Elon Musk. Elon Musk, yes. Um, I mean, I don't have loads to say about it other than it's like really weird. Um, I would recommend watching it for entertainment value if you're kind of into cringe. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I mean... Yeah, baffling, which I enjoy, as I've said before. Um, baffling, detrimental to yes. him, himself. He, well, I mean, this is what I was... would have been better not doing it. I guess, but, like, this is what I was wondering if... Because now his bizarre antics, depending on how you look at it, it could also be, you know... Um, Genius. Well, I wasn't going to say that, no. Uh, 
like a different kind of marketing of like these people who you know hear him say like yeah fuck disney you know and are like yeah i also say fuck disney i'm gonna join twitter now i don't know what the what the strategy is because he said something directly to bob Iger. Mm. was mm. it he said how do you like that bob mm. or something yeah and i didn't realize initially a lot of what he does um kind of comes across like he thinks he's a social media influencer where everyone who's interacting with him like knows his whole backstory and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, when he said Bob, I was I was like, who? Which Bob? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, it does make sense that it was Bob Iger. Yeah. But. Yeah, but I said, Bob. Yeah, um, and obviously, in response to yeah, Disney is pause advertising as well, and. Um, I guess people were saying that Disney hadn't posted anything on Twitter in a while. Who had um, the uh, the official Disney account hadn't posted anything on Twitter oh. since this was a few days ago when I read this, so maybe it's different now. But um, that they hadn't posted anything, and they normally post like all the time um, after his, you know, liking anti-Semitic shit. Mm-hmm. And um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the strategy is here i mean you can make an argument like well maybe he doesn't really actually care about losing all kinds of advertisers and losing billions of dollars of value off of twitter because he really cares about making his point and you know free speech for me not for me and it's worth it but then don't also like try to make the claim that like you're gonna make loads of money from Twitter. He was saying shit about like Tesla's gonna be the number one car company in the world, um, with like ten Chinese companies behind it, something like that. Yes. Um, very weird. Uh, especially now with Cybertruck out, it doesn't look like it's been super well received. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, definitely seen lots of people posting, um, like crash test footage of Cybertruck like comparing it to other trucks where other like typical trucks will like have their crumple zone so they kind of yeah. like crumple inward and then uh, kind of like stop moving but then with the Cybertruck you can see it like immediately stop and kind of bounce showing that it's not taking the impact and like all that impact is going to be in the passenger cabin exactly. um, like this is a Porsche 911 crashing at 60 miles an hour crumples yeah. This is the Cybertruck crashing at five miles an hour, yeah. like hits a fire hydrant and then just cuts to a Scud missile exploding on a runway. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about like crash test stuff, so maybe, you know, that's just what I've read. It just maybe ba- it's incorrect, yeah. but it, um, I've also seen some, the same thing, um, like crash test footage where it shows the, appears to show the back axle of the Cybertruck just snapping. Um, which oh, so yeah. I guess also shows that it maybe doesn't have a good good crumple capacity. Hmm. Okay. Um, and then there's the whole sharp edge on the dashboard, which I know you didn't see. No. Where it looks it looks like marble and people were laughing about that and then I guess like saying marble. like, well it's definitely gonna be plastic a composite of some sort that has like a marble look. But it's just like a solid ninety degree angle on the thing. So <laughs> Congratulations, uh, your face is now spam, I guess. <laughs> a nice big line going around. Oh. No more jaw. Yeah. yeah, um, okay, I hadn't seen anything about that, about yeah. the Cybertruck. The stuff I saw was people who had uh, said that they uh, had put a deposit down and were not going to buy one now because um, they're way more expensive than they were. With and, way less range. And yeah, they're not like the up to thing. the initially promised specs, right? Uh, generally, I mean, in some places they are. Mm, okay, yeah. But um, the range seems to be the big thing. Mm-hmm. Base model's only got 250 mile range, and I think the premium model has 360 or something like that, whereas they'd said originally the premium model would have 500. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because people... And I'd say that does matter most of all with yeah. electric cars, right? Yes, and also, like, didn't people pre-order these, like, years in advance? Yeah, but they, only, but they only put $100 down to... Oh, I see. And it's refundable. Oh, all right, well, sure. Yeah. 
Okay, interesting. And other stuff I've seen about it uh, has it. You see, it's weird. I, I don't know enough about cars or manufacturing or anything, but um, I've seen some reporting say Tesla are gearing up to make two hundred fifty thousand of these a year, mm. and I've seen other reporting say this is this. It was never intended to be like their number one pro, number one selling product. Mm -hmm. It's more of a kind of. Not a gimmick product exactly, but like a very recognisable product that would entice people to buy a Tesla 3. Like a loss leader almost, or something. So, yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So I don't know. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know tons about it either, so I know it looks... I mean, I don't know. You don't like it? I, I, the look of it, you mean? Um, my main thing looking at it is like it doesn't look safe. Yeah, okay. That's a big thing for me. What wasn't he also talking about, like, you could... It's also totally waterproof, and you could... I don't know. Move it, I think I saw this. Damn, and I must have forgotten to tell you about it. Um, something about him saying that it's also waterproof, so you'll be able to ford lakes and streams and rivers, and also not too choppy seas. Not too choppy or deep seas. Or maybe that was like a... Sometimes it's fucking hard to tell. If I'm looking at, like... Something he actually posted or um, like a joke thing. Because it's hard to tell the difference with him. That's what makes it so funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. So what is this then? Is this a big meltdown? Because I guess he did that interview right before he did Cybertruck launch. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they're not shipping until 2025. Really? Okay. Yeah, like a few have, mm. to VIPs, mm -hmm. co-founder of Reddit. Really? Yeah. Mm. Okay, interesting. These people all know each other, did you not know that? I could have guessed, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, anything else? Any other thoughts about that interview? N no, I... Y yes. No, and by no I mean yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, I... I kind of felt sorry for him. Mm. I don't mean that in a condescending way. Mm. I felt like, I don't know, like, this is someone who, for probably a number of reasons, is very, very isolated. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. I also thought that what he was saying about AI was both interesting and bananas. Mm. Um, because if you remember, he's Sorkin, whatever Sorkin, asked him about... <laughs> Um, one of many lawsuits and one of his answers that he cycled through was uh, it's not even going to matter because in three years we're going to have um, AI that he didn't say these words but basically becomes the singularity mm -hmm. and like real AI mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean there were some weird things in there yes he was also didn't Sorkin ask him something about, like, if you had to design a new phone now, and he's like, oh, I'm not interested in designing a phone. Well, if you did, what would you do? And he's like, Neuralink. I mean, I love the this idea that, like, you know, censorship and spooky government let a private company put a microchip in your brain. Yeah. Um, and that's also just kind of silly. And then getting into, like, a whole thing about... The monkeys again. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. About, Saying that. Oh yeah, that was a complete lie. Yeah, the same lines about. Well, they were just terminally ill monkeys, and they died because they were terminally ill, not because of. You no, know, if you read about implants. those monkeys, they died horrible deaths, mm -hmm. like scratching at their own heads to try and get that shit out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I think you so. Remember? We found that article. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think you found it. Uh yes. From one of the... That was horrific. Things. Yeah, the yeah. the monkey test subjects they're using at Neuralink. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I mean, many of them, maybe all of them were terminally ill, but they suffered. Yeah, and wasn't he trying to say, like, maybe I'm misremembering, wasn't he saying, like, we're going to start using human test subjects in a few months? Yeah. That can't be right. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if they'll start recruiting in prisons. Mm. This is how we get Doctor Doom. Yeah. Yeah. This is how we get Mexican Joker. Um, 
You know, uh, not really on topic, but another thing as well, I think that the thing that would... I could totally see, like, oh, in a hundred years, it's normal for lots of people to get a Neuralink type thing mm -hmm. where it's basically a mobile phone in their brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that kind of technology could happen eventually. And I think eventually. It, it would be sort of non-invasive and cheap enough that people would do it. Mm -hmm. um, but what would make me want to do that, or the Google Glasses thing, is stuff that could never be allowed because of privacy laws, mm -hmm. which I know kind of makes me sound a bit like a pervert. But I mean, like, what I'd want to know is I'd want to be walking along and be like, have the the watchdogs thing of like, oh, that's Albert Johnson. Oh, and he, oh, he's actually a millionaire. And mm -hmm. oh, that guy over there, he did five years in prison, mm -hmm. which yeah. obviously shouldn't be allowed. But that's what I'd want from it. Yeah, I get I'd you. I'd want to be able to look at people, like, have a conversation <laughs> and be like, oh, they're talking about ticket touting. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Um, I mean, I suppose I could do that anyway. I could just walk around with a big microphone, couldn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Directional mic. Yeah. It's not really like I want to <laughs> pick up on any of that, but... What you're saying is you want a better technological um, uh, method for being nosy. Yeah, I suppose so. But what I'm really saying is if I'm going to have an implant in my brain, I'd want it to do more than an iPhone. Yeah. I don't know what exactly, mm -hmm. but I'd want it to... I get you. There better be a good reason to put something in there. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Neuralink, I just did something pretty bad. I need you to feel guilt for me. <laughs> Maybe not that, but... Yeah, I mean... Like, if you could have, like, a personal assistant inside your brain where... What, like the Microsoft Paperclip? <laughs> yeah, but one that you could actually tell to do, like, uh, oh, I'm gonna go and do, I'm gonna go and do some work, but while I'm doing that, I want you to prank call everyone who made Ghostbusters 3, or okay. something. Mm, okay, mm, you're selling me on this idea. Yeah. There could be good uses. But I guess, you, I guess, again, you don't need that in your brain to do that. No. You could just be, a, learn to program. Yeah, I mean, what would you, what would you need to be in your brain to do something useful? I don't know. Yeah, because even like police officers with, let's say, like facial scanners, where you can instantly tell who someone is and if there's a warrant, you wouldn't need that in your brain. Mm -hmm. You just need that on their camera, mm -hmm. and then it tells them, right? You don't really need ever need any. You don't really need any of this shit in your brain. What are we talking about? Is it, is this a good idea? Do people want this? I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe people do. Um... I don't know, I just, I could think of much more fun, um, robot in body things to do. Like robot arm. In the video game Prey, um, a premise of, uh, this big corporation on this space station is that they've invented a way where they can, um, not just harness people's memories, but their skills. Mm -hmm. So you can have, you can pay to have, like, an implant where you can suddenly play the piano, like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, or whatever. Okay, yeah, like learn kung fu. Like, I guess a teaching device would be the only thing I could think of, or yeah. something that kind of bridges a gap, like you know, a babel fish sort or... of thing, where mm. you mm -hmm. can understand people's languages or get real time translation. Yeah, but again, there's Google Translate. But again, you don't do that in your brain. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. To right. me or them? Right, everyone. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Hmm. Well, any other thoughts about any of that? No. Okay. Um, next on the list, uh, Felicity Huffman. Interview with ABC7, Los Angeles, the first public interview since um, doing 11 days in prison for the Varsity Blues scandal, um, paying uh, Rick Singer, who arranged through an associate, to um, take her daughter's SAT for her, um, and got caught as part of the Operation Varsity Blues. She was in her interview uh, talking about... It was only like a couple minutes long, 
So five I don't minutes, know. Five minutes, yeah. Five minutes long, yeah. I don't know if, you know, we only got to see a clip of it online or what, but. Uh, so what was that about? Well, I mean, it's only five minutes long, but it's it's five minutes of just pure fury. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. She's not sorry, no, at all. Uh, she was just trying to be a good mother. Mm -hmm. uh, she would like to apolo apologize to academics or whatever. Um, yeah, um, just more or less explaining why she did it in one of the most least uh, the least apologetic ways ever. That she thought that. Her daughter had to go to a good school in order for her to be a good mom, and that's the only way that her daughter would have a chance at a future, being a rich celebrity's child and all. Uh, you know, the only option was to bribe her way into yeah. a more esteemed college than she could have gotten into. So, obviously Felicity Huffman and William H. Macy are both multi, multi, multi-millionaires. Um, by the time... F fucking whatever her name is got into college, she was already making like hundreds of thousands from brand deals. Are you talking about, um, that's not her daughter. Uh, oh no? No, you're talking oh. about, you're thinking of Olivia Jade, Lori Loughlin's daughter. Oh, um, oh right, okay. Which is an even more infuriating Who the fuck case. is Lori Loughlin? Um, from Full House. Yeah, yeah, it's not important. Oh man, I've just realized these two people are different people. Is she also blonde as well? Um, no, she is, uh, brunette-ish. Oh. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, that changes it, and it was fair enough. No, uh, fuck them. Yeah. 11 days in jail. Mm -hmm. Um, there's that story about the woman who got eight years. In prison in, I think, Florida, yeah, for, um, uh, putting a, a family, I think it was putting a family member's address on their kids' school form so that they could go to a school in a better neighborhood. A school that didn't, a public school. Wow. Um, that wasn't... You know, they didn't suck ass. Because that's definitely a and, big um, thing in Britain, people doing that. Middle class people doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big time. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Eight years. Yeah, which I was, like, kind of expecting her to... Because she was... It was set up with the interview, like, pretty much directly straight on. And I met a nice lady during my community service that... Uh, and now we're working together on something. I thought it was going to be related to that. Um, related to, like, sentencing differentials of, you know... Uh, the, like, somehow related to the fact that, you know, she could say, like, I, I only spent 11 days in this place, and, you know, I, um, really want to do something now for sentencing disparities. Nope, just, um, uh, yeah, this lady now works for a charity for, like, people who are getting out of prison, and I'm helping now. And that was it. And not only is she helping, she's on the board. And on the board, yeah. Yeah. Um... So yeah, pretty infuriating for so, yeah. so few words. Um, and yes, I too also felt like... I mean, just don't even say any of that. If you're going to say, like, I thought that this was... You know, I wanted my daughter to have a future and stuff like that. And, and then you should say, and now I realize that actually she already had a massive advantage. And I'm just taking advantage away from kids who deserve it. Um, who actually, you know, got those SAT scores or whatever to get into their schools. Um... But no, no, there's no, there's no mention of that. Sorry, not sorry was the theme that I got. Erosion of public trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Contributes to. Yeah, um, I guess I should say if you're interested in the Operation Varsity Blues um, scandal, there's a decent Netflix uh, documentary about it. Uh, With lots of dramatization that's that, actually... That actually works. Actually yeah, works. Starring um, Matthew Modine. Um, and it's just as used to, um, they're like acting out like actual like phone call transcripts and it's more like connecting pieces yeah, between it's done well. the other elements. It's done pretty well. Yeah. I'd recommend. Yeah. Um, I think that Felicity Huffman should have definitely done more than 11 days. I think that, uh, Vincent Price should have shown her something in his cellar. Okay. So you started out there, uh, not saying what I thought you were going to say, but then we got back around to it. So, like a nice, you know, nice wine over there in that alcove, unfinished alcove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I was still building it, as you can see, with these bricks and mortar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The chainsaw and mop. <laughs> <coughs> I 
Well, anything else to say about that? Well, I think there's room for a flamethrower. I'll go get it. What next? Um, okay, next some fun. Uh, Bethesda responding to negative reviews of Starfield on Steam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to... Sure. So, um, I noticed on... Some fun. In the social media hellscape titterings, people pointing out that, um, and sharing screenshots of Bethesda officially responding to negative Steam reviews, um, and the, uh, crux of those responses were more or less, um, you're wrong, you didn't enjoy the game properly. In a kind of nice, you know, In a PR-y PR -y way. PR -y way. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the, I think more than one of the responses, some, some of them, I read quite a few, were, obviously the last two paragraphs were copy-pasted, but the first one was, like, tailor-written mm -hmm. to the concerns, and one of them quoted uh, one of the developers... I don't think I might have been Todd Howard. I don't I know. It was Todd Howard. About you wouldn't, or the astronauts weren't bored when they landed on the moon yeah. and there was nothing there. People were complaining about the um, procedurally generated planets being boring with too much spacing, too much walking between points of interest, and everything being quite empty. And yeah, I, I could be wrong, but I think it was Todd Howard as well. I want to say, like, in a presentation for the game before it came out, um, I could be wrong, but addressing that saying, well, when the astronauts went to the moon, there was nothing there, and they certainly weren't bored. Um, Which, yeah. You know, the obvious there. I don't know if it even needs to be said, but that's yeah. because they are real astronauts on the fucking moon for the first time. Uh, not me in my pajamas in my house trying to have fun in a video game. Yeah. Uh, empty stuff is fucking boring. Yeah, those yeah. sorts of statements make a lot more sense if you think that it was intended to be a lot more survival-based. Mm. where potentially walking for a fucking kilometer mm. across a an alien world is difficult and challenging mm. and not just a chore. It would have made a lot more sense, you know, where you know, it, you're like plodding along and pff, mm -hmm. pff, a lot more slow gameplay, but they got rid of all that. Yeah, Didn't they, weren't there supposed to be like elements of temperature? Originally as yeah, well, the, there they? are in it. The, okay. There are, yeah. but it's it's mainly aesthetic and kind of meaningless. There's all sorts of like, cor you know, corrosion and stuff. And yeah. they've said that they took it out mm. at one point. Okay. Because they decided it was too complicated. Well, here's a thought. Tell me if you agree or not. Um, I think that it would have been a lot better if there was just more variety. Like, I'm thinking about, like, Subnautica. There are certain biomes on the map that are, like, super dead and empty. But there's, like, lushness in other places, and there's, like, so much... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That when you go into those empty places, it feels, like, eerie and quiet, but also I can hear a reaper somewhere in the distance. There's, like, the terror factor of that. Well, in... You know, but it, when I was watching you play for however long that was, however many hours... It just felt like every single planet that you landed on, it was like, now I'm just walking across an empty planet for like 10 goddamn minutes, and then like copy-pasted points of interest. Yeah, I mean, to answer that, I think the problem was transitioning, mm. where in something like Subnautica, um, with its different biomes, its biomes don't just stop, usually. Mm. There's some hard edges, but... Yeah, mm -hmm. like there's this cro kind of crossover where other. you suddenly realize, like, oh, I'm in the fucking dead zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or something, or... Um, and obviously, yeah, you have the problem of space, and, you know, all... <sighs> you go to a, a jungle planet, and it's a jungle planet. You go to a dead planet, and it's a dead planet. There's no, like... Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that would be too complicated anyway, but... Mm -hmm. Well, not if it wasn't procedurally generated. Sure. So, yeah. um, but... Yeah, well, anyway, I, I, you want to talk about Starfield? Not, I mean, I want to talk about these responses. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Because... Bit of um, a tangent there, sorry. No, I mean, I, I'm just saying, like, I will, but we might never get out of that hole. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know why they did this. I don't think it's actually a big deal. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to hurt them. Mm. Although it's definitely not a good look, mm -hmm. um, like I think it's good that developers respond to people, but not like this. Yeah. 
Um, it, the condescending feel to it is what I found interesting. Um, it wasn't like, uh, you know, we're sorry that you didn't, you know, enjoy this aspect or whatever. It was just actually, um, it's really fun. So yeah, like I thought the the, I mean I thought the gameplay was kind of lame, but not not broken, not, I mean, but the you know the theme and the setting and the writing was just so lazy and generic. Mm -hmm. Like, what would the response be to that? Like, uh, actually, if you were in a galaxy where there was a cowboy faction and a gangster world, uh, you'd be loving it. Mm -hmm. It would be the best experience you ever had. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to space? Mm -hmm. Right? If you, right, it might, you know, it might be boring in a video game, right, just hopping around, doing mm -hmm. the same thing, delivering fucking coffees in between worlds. But if you were doing that for real life, you'd be laughing your tits off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah... Hmm, just weird. Just, just weird, yeah. Yeah, just, um, just make the game better and make it worth playing in a few years. Perhaps, <coughs> but... Fucking drop it, just move on. Yeah. Yeah. So, <coughs> oust Todd, redo the board, and fucking redouble on Elder Scrolls Six. but whatever. Yeah, yeah, I guess we'll see. I'm definitely not going to get excited about the next Elder Scrolls until, like, it's out and overwhelmingly positive before I even think about thinking about it, to be honest. What could they do that would kill it? That would kill Elder Scrolls Six? Um, oh god, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I imagine a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, you know, they fucked Starfield, or like, oh, I thought it was alright, or whatever. Um, but Elder Scrolls, you know, has been so good every game, so, you know, it could still be good, it could be good. Um, Do you think they could get away with just doing basically the mechanics of Skyrim, but on a diff on a newer engine and make it beautiful, like Red mm -hmm. Dead Redemption 6, six, Red Dead Redemption 2, so that by the time it comes out it's kind of... It's still aged, it's not cutting edge, but it, it does look really good. I mean, would that be enough? I mean... Because I just, I don't know, man, I, I just don't think they're going to add anything real in terms of mechanics. See, here's my problem. Um, I like Skyrim so much, and that I even really like that engine quite a bit. Um, for me, mm -hmm. I would be happy if they... Um, didn't make massive gameplay improvements. Just add like the settlement system. Make it bigger. Which they fucking got rid of in Starfield. Um, for yeah. For all intents and purposes, you know. But like add like a similar element as like Fallout 4, like building settlements and make them more connected and have like a reason to. And make cities stuff a bit and bigger. Make cities bigger. Yes, definitely. Some tweaks like that, but I don't think that my expectations um, are like over the top high for something that I would enjoy. Um, just make it feel like a, you know, an adventure. Skyrim was really successful at that. But the problem is, um, after Starfield, I also felt like I didn't really want a lot of crazy shit. Um, you know, just a little, you know, again, be fine with the same engine, you know. I want to be um, able to kill any NPC and have it come up occasionally like, this is a vital NPC. If you kill this person, mm -hmm. it will break a quest. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just... You know, give us back levitation where I can levitate anyone and mm -hmm. throw them into the fucking sun. Yeah, I get you. Because um, even Skyrim, there are a lot of um, essential NPCs. Mm. I mean, there are there are too many. It kind of ruins it sometimes where you're trying to play a bad guy and you can't clear everyone out because everyone, you know, like people behind the bannered mayor, I think, are... Essential and stuff, but you can mm -hmm. kill Bellathor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get you. Um, you can kill Moriarty in Fallout Three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like a bit spoilery when you're just like fighting a bunch of people, and then um, you just kind of discover that that person can't die. It's like, oh, so I guess that's part of a quest somewhere. Um, I know what you mean. I guess the trend that I see is like with each new iteration. Um, of anything from Bethesda's, it seems like they like to 
Um, like, like I say, with Starfield, I would have wanted them just to add just a little bit onto stuff that they've done before, you know. Make it, like, kind of, like, you know, doesn't need to be more complicated than Fallout 4, but just, like, a little bit more complicated in some areas. No, no, we're just, like, we're just gonna cut down on features. But, um, but add shallow features as well. add shit that doesn't matter, yeah. So, we'll see, I guess. Hmm, any other thoughts on that? Um, I reckon they're going to, in Elder Scrolls Six. It'll be way more platformy, and there'll be lots of first-person. Uh, what's the word? Parkour. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And so I want it. I, I know. I, I know. I do. get you. Yeah. See, I want them to like build more RPG elements back into some of these properties, not strip them away in favor of dumbing things down even more. Just make it a shooter, then. Just make a different fucking game. I don't know. <laughs> make Oblivion where I can get... I can do all the shit for Burma and then not have two guards turn up. I said in Oblivion Gate, like, the Yarl sent us for whatever, like, fucking hell. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah. oh. uh, What's next? Next, um, right, that leads into uh, the Fallout TV show trailer. Oh, yeah, came out right. this morning and we watched it. Te I have, teaser trailer. I have very little to say. It looked like you would expect. Yeah. There was no surprises. Mm -hmm. it didn't look bad. It didn't. There was, there was, it, was, it was a teaser trailer. There was no story yeah, it was a teaser, yeah. element at all. We saw a bit of Walton Goggins as a ghoul, a bit of Walton Goggins not as a ghoul. Mm hmm. But wearing a... Like a vault cowboy costume or something. Yeah, I guess. Um, I'm assuming that's him like before, like in like the before times, like pre-war. Ah, uh, you see, I don't know. Okay. I mean, maybe, but <clears throat> well, then he's really old. Um, well, like he gets trapped out of like, I don't know, I'm assuming that like he was meant to go into a vault and then, you know, doesn't make it or whatever gets trapped out in the wasteland, becomes a ghoul. But he could be a contemporary. Could be. Yeah. I mean, why do you think he... Um, well, I mean, I'm basing this entirely on just, yeah, seeing him not as a ghoul, you know, like on a horse, with like a kid, um, late in the trailer, and then, you know, he is a ghoul. So... Yeah. I mean, I know that, you know, it's not the, not the only way to become a ghoul is to be like, pre-war and trapped out in the wasteland. Like, John Hancock became a ghoul from taking some crazy drug. Um, and that's law. Yeah, that's, that's canon, yes. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but I just... That was my assumption. Yeah. Um, okay, well... Uh, yeah, I've got us Walt, talking, isn't it? Walton Goggins. Walton Goggins. Love him. Want to see him more stuff, but... The biggest complaint about this will be... Not enough Walton Goggins. Yeah, because I bet you he's in for, like, an hour total. Yeah, something. I'm guessing Maybe a bit well. more. Yeah. But we looked, didn't we? And he's only in, like... He's not in all the episodes, even. He's not in all the episodes now, so... Yeah, I guess we'll see. Oh. Um, Is it woke? Oh, God. I'm just, with that shit. <laughs> Why can't it be non-woke and have nothing to say? Like, the Fallout... Like Robocop. Like Robocop. <laughs> like Robocop. <laughs> yes, like Starship Troopers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... I know we didn't see like anything to do with the plot. I don't really care about that personally. I don't need like an intricate plot in this. I think it can be super simple um, and be fine. What I really want is like the wackiness of the of the Fallout universe, and I'm not totally sure. There were like elements of some wacky things in the teaser, but overall, I felt like it kind of took itself seriously, um, and that is like a an ongoing concern for me for when this comes out that it'll focus too much on trying to be like dramatic um, and I see Fallout more as being a really fun wacky ass series with some dramatic moments here and there. You see I don't know I don't necessarily get that from the trailer I mean there were no like dead-on comedic bits but uh, I don't know I think it will be you know comedic mm -hmm. um, yeah there are no super mutants in the trailer. Yeah. Which leads me to believe there's going to be one 
really well done one, hopefully. Mm, for like a minute somewhere. No, I was going to say that is like, it is introduced like episode seven or eight mm. and ends up being a goodie. Okay. And maybe all the, the only thing you can say is bad motherfucker. See, I would go further and say that um, we'll probably see a super mutant in the very last episode at the very end, like a post teaser or like a post script um, credit scene, Marvel style. Uh, our character will, you know, go into a place and like, oh, what's that? And then it's a super mutant, and that'll be it. Okay, all right. Let's expand on this then. I ooh ooh. Okay, mm, I bet what titillating. it will be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Titifilating. I bet. No, I don't. I mean, I don't know if this. <laughs> what, what would the odds of this be like a thousand to one? But I wouldn't be that surprised if um, we hear about super mutants and like how dangerous they are. And like, are you, everyone can agree, like, whether they, you know, counterfactions or whatever, ghouls and whatever, Brotherhood of Steel, whatever, they all agree, like, don't go that way, the super mutants that way. Mm -hmm. And then our main character ends up having to go that way mm -hmm. to get away from raiders, gunners, <laughs> yeah. something, and uh, ends up, like, falling down a cliff, mm -hmm. and, and then, like, oh, I'm dead, and then they, you can hear super mutants, and, like, oh, God, they're going to eat me. What are they saying? Uh, you don't hear what they say, they're saying, I want to eat his brains! Human! Human! Or her brains, or whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, the last thing you'll hear, just right before the credits, is like, I'll help you, human! They call me Uncle Leo! And if they do that, I'll fucking shit my pants. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because that was one of the best characters ever. Mm -hmm. You see him, like, twice. Okay. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. Do you think that we're going to get any, um... Surprise like crossover characters from other series. Well having said the Uncle Leo thing. I mean, I kind of hope not I hope if they are that I hope they're very small characters mm -hmm. Like I mean, I wouldn't mind if Raul turned up mm -hmm. But um, or RL3 that'd be fucking cool mm -hmm. But not I hope not. Mm -hmm. I hope not. I mean maybe mentioned for sure mm -hmm. You know definitely I imagine they're gonna mention um, What's the name Tandy the mm -hmm. First NCR president and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm curious. I know um, one of the characters is named Maximus. He yeah. appears to be a Brotherhood of Steel character. Maybe. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was the the black guy in the vertebird. Right. I thought, but and isn't that what the hell's that dude's name in Fallout Four? It's not Maximus. Oh, it's, okay. We looked it up. Yeah. It's, okay. It's, fine. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I just kill all those motherfuckers. <laughs> you never done a playthrough with them? Um, my I think my very first game, I did all of the dance storyline and got far enough to where I could do that. Um, but otherwise, oh, fuck them. I kill those motherfuckers on sight in every game now. His name is Night Dance. Private Dancer. <laughs> yeah, um, no, fuck the Brotherhood. They can eat a dick. Okay. So, I guess we didn't really... Ghoul dick. Couldn't really tell from... Yes, that's right. Yeah, we couldn't um, tell what they are. Yeah, if they're bad guys or what. I mean, even if they were wearing Brotherhood armor, they could have been apprehended. Mm. Whatever. Yeah. Too whatever. much time on this. We did see a Mr. Handy, thank God. We did. I, Otherwise, that also made me clap. That would have been a blood vessel. No, yeah. I don't care. But. Yeah, that's something very handy. Um, we also got a German Shepherd, Walton Goggins' dog. Um, yeah. And if that ends up being that this is in the same time frame as Fallout 4, and that's actually dog meat who has then traveled across the country to Boston, I will shit a brick. It, it, it'll be called dog meat, but it'll be a different dog. A different dog meat, okay. I'm pretty sure in Fallout 3 it's called dog meat. Oh, is there? Okay. I think so. Gotcha. I've still only. And then maybe there's a dog. I think it's called dog meat. Okay, well, I retract my statement. Cool. Stupid little man! Yeah. I, yeah, I know. I also love super mutants. Um, so I guess we'll see. Stay still! We, we did see a bit of some blood explosion. Yeah. Yeah, that's a recurring thing for me. That cool. Would help make it good. 
uh, in my opinion, is not being shy on gore. And Guy Pearce is the mysterious stranger. Ooh. Hmm. Dum 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 dum. Yeah. I wouldn't be mad to see. See, this is a thing where, like, I love Fallout People so much that into caps. I, like, I, I would enjoy that kind of shit. Like, again, I want to see a head explode and some eyeballs just go flying toward the camera, you know, or someone's arm get shut off and go flying into the sun. Like, that would make me happy, but I think they're going to take it more serious than that. And, um, but that's what I would want out of it. Flying into the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A head getting blown off and just rolling down a hill for like three miles. You know. Those are the <laughs> Easter eggs I want. <laughs> Someone getting shot and then the rest of the conversation between four people is they're all looking at them. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. What's next? Uh, next. Okay. Um, so, next, briefly discuss Apple TV+. Plus. Um, we sort of accidentally ended up with Apple TV Plus free trial for three months, um, through a very dumb story, uh, that is hardly important. Well, what's um, the story? It's not a story. You thought Napoleon was available. Yeah, because I was like, kept seeing shit about Napoleon on Apple TV, and I was like, oh, is it gonna be on it, like, with a theatrical release, like a Five Nights at Freddy's thing? And I googled it, and I saw, watch Napoleon on Apple TV Plus, and I was like, oh! Really? Is that what they're doing? And then foolishly did not read into it any further and got duped and then signed up for a free trial, so that's good at least. And we discovered, no, it's not there. They're just promoting, because it will be there eventually. And we were like, well, shit. We're going to find something to watch on this motherfucker. Um, yeah. So we watched a couple of things on it. Mm. Um, Apple TV Plus. Yeah, first impressions of Apple TV Plus. Poor. Yeah. To shit. Uh, I can see why I never hear about anything that's on it. Um, yes, there's not a lot on it. I looked it up. The actual, if you're paying for it, price is $10 a month. Yeah, I know. You've that's, asked me that like three times. Um, that's ridiculous. There's like nothing on there. Um, no adverts though. Yeah, sure, but... Uh, no, there's, there's really not a lot on there. I mean, I went through their documentaries. Yeah. And it said there's 20 document... 20... Yeah, you looked A to Z... Mm -hmm. Yeah. 20 documentaries. Yeah. Um, Unless the UI is busted, like it is on like, so many of these. Yeah. There's like no movies on there. Um, I really knew nothing about it, so this was a fresh experience for me. They have a, a bunch of their own original series that I've never heard of um, that do not look interesting at all. We watched um, Silo. We watched like three episodes of that and gave up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And never even discussed going back to it. Yeah. Um, what was the service we watched the thing with J.K. Simmons on? Oh, um, that I think was on... I want to say that was on Prime Video. Yeah. What was that called? I can't I remember. Don't remember. Yeah, J.K. Sorry. Simmons and Sissy Spacek are... Discover like a... No, they don't discover, they... You don't even remember, we watched like I remember. 10 episodes of that. I remember, we watched the whole thing. Yes, there's a, like a portal to space in there backyard underground and uh and then there were some other people doing other stuff in like mexico that was kind of boring and um <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the series ended <laughs> and then it ends on a cliffhanger and is it got cancelled immediately yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah so that was worthless anyway i don't know why we brought that up but it's you brought it up well i was gonna say silo reminded me of that where mm. It was like, oh god, mm -hmm. is something gonna happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not gonna be what I think it is, is it? You know, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boring, yeah. probably. Silo was pretty boring. Silo is about uh, in the future, um, there are people that live essentially in a massive vault. Mm -hmm. uh, outside appears to be obliterated. And they live in not really a dictatorship, but a controlled society, inevitably, mm -hmm. because there's limited space etc mm -hmm. and um some people think the outside is actually okay mm -hmm. their history is has been completely forgotten for even unclear reasons it sounds interesting but then it just take, takes so much time and mm -hmm. it's really not that interesting that idea you know it's mm -hmm. been done yeah i don't know yeah we watched it because rose the hat was in it yeah um, Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah, I liked her in a lot of stuff. And, uh, 
this was not one of them. So. Anyway, um, Silo wasn't on there. What were we going to say about Apple TV? Oh, right. Um, so, first of all, um, uh, it sucks. Looks, you know, uh, there's like nothing on there. Um, I was originally looking at... It, it doesn't... Just briefly, I'll mention this. It doesn't compare to any other streaming service because... Like, Netflix will have, like, Netflix original series, but then they'll also have movies that they've, like, licensed, and, you know, you can watch, like, some old shit, even if there's nothing original from Netflix, because there rarely is, that's worth watching. There's, like, nothing like that here. It's just, like, Apple original series, Apple original movies, um, and a lot of it seems to be, like, family-oriented, um, and then there's some, like, sci-fi things that don't look interesting. Their documentary section's, like, really bare... Like, why do I want to watch a documentary about that actress girl, Gomez, something Gomez. Anyway, um, but we remembered that several years ago, uh, seeing a announcement for an Apple TV show starring Rob McElhenney, um, written by Rob McElhenney and Charlie Day and you know, the Sunny people. So we were like, well, I, I totally forgot that that even came out. I've never heard anyone say anything about it, so let's check that out. You've never heard anyone say anything about it? Right. I forgot entirely that it existed after that. I'm pretty sure we watched it. It was like at, like a, it was like an, at an Apple event, and they were like, you know, talking about iPhones or some shit. And then like, and now... Rob McElhenney is going to have a show on Apple Plus, and there was a trailer, and like the trailer nobody clapped or responded. Plain. Yeah, really. That's how I remember it. Well, we watched almost all of the first. In fact, we did watch the first we season, the first season yeah. and then half of the pandemic special. Mm -hmm. um, and what did you think of Mythic Quest? Um, Rated nine and a half on IMDb. Yeah, whatever. Some episodes were. I think the overall rating was like seven something. It was interesting but... that we had Apple Plus. There's hardly anything on it, and we had to search for it. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Right? Is only because it was like, oh, they must have Mythic Quest. Mhm. Mm yeah. Um. Yeah, I had to go looking for it, like searching for it, and it was not the first thing that came up when I got to the MYTH. So, yeah, they apparently didn't think it was very good either. But it's getting another season. Yeah. What, what's Mythic Quest about? Uh, Mythic Quest is about a game studio run by Rob McElhenney's character, Ian Grimm. Uh, and essentially their game is sort of like World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. And yeah, MMO, yeah. it's like the biggest game in the genre. They're not quite a fine genre. Mm. Yeah. And, and um, he's a massive narcissist and... Basically just playing Mac. Yeah, he's exactly. a massive narcissist, and each episode is about him freaking out, or not meeting a deadline, or demanding something mm -hmm. unreasonable, or having a tantrum. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, that's about right, yeah. yeah. Um, with a lot of, um, at least this is something I noticed, a lot of recycled Sonny jokes. I don't know if they're meant to be references to Sonny, or yeah, if he just made the same still. joke again. What was that? Yeah, wh which ones? Um... Like, where someone's talking, and then Rob McElhenney and, um, what's his name? Rickety Cricket start coughing David, David while they're talking. And they're like, oh, you're coughing. That's from Sonny. They're doing their coughing thing, the students, when D is as a substitute teacher. Yeah. That's just a recycled Sonny joke. Right. Um, uh, that's the first one that comes to mind, but there were a couple of those where he, like, literally just did, like, a Sonny line again. Hmm. Okay. Um, which was weird. Uh, and distracting to me because, again, I just couldn't stop thinking, like, is that meant to be referencing a show that was actually funny and pretty good? Because I wouldn't do that. You're just reminding me of a good show. Um, there were several moments where we were like, oh, yeah, I remember. That was a good show. <laughs> Up to a point. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, uh, it grew on us, though. The first and episode was awful. The first and episode then, was terrible. Yeah, like, not a fucking joke in it. Um, and then it did grow on me a bit. Like episode two, three, where I started to like these other characters more. Uh, and then there was episode, I think, five. five. Um, which, where, is... which is where I went, I'm out. Yeah. 
Which apparently that's one of the episodes that people love. I, well, people I love, love the fly them. episode in Breaking Bad. Doesn't mean it wasn't a waste of my time. Yeah. Yeah, just a one-off episode about some other game studio that is pretty much completely irrelevant to the actual story that we're telling. Um, it only comes back at the end uh, like of like the next episode where it's like, oh, the, this one-off episode about this husband-wife couple that ran a game studio like 20 years ago, they actually were in this building too, where now Mythic Quest is. That's the only connection. Yeah, and they, um, they also sold out. And yeah, they sold out, which is a weird theme, um, Rob McElhinney. So. Yeah, so that, that episode, it it's described as... The, the bio in it, the description in it, is um, the life and death cycle of a gaming company. Mm -hmm. And it's fucking not. Yeah. That's not the life and death. Mm -hmm. The life and death, you know, look at Maxis or something. Mm -hmm. Or look at Blizzard, which mm -hmm. is obviously, you know, being continually referenced here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It isn't a wife and a uh, husband and wife make one successful game and then the second one is the collapse. Mm -hmm. It isn't that. Yeah. There and that leads me to another issue I had with the whole series, which is um <laughs> you already know what I'm gonna say. Huh? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, it comes across like it was made by somebody who doesn't know anything about video games and doesn't give a shit about video games, and it's kind of taking the angle of like making fun of gamers, like persistently. Um, in a way that is completely inaccurate. Like, they, um, kind of imply that, like, every single person that plays their game is a child, um, and there's, like, like, other, they meet, like, streamers and stuff who are all, like, ten-year-olds, um, and, uh, just, um, very condescending, and it made me kept wondering, like, who's the audience for this? Because, I well, think Well, I people, would have thought it would have been gamers. That's what I thought, too. But it doesn't come across that way because they have like a severe lack of understanding of like how like basic game shit. Do you think it is that or do you think it's attention to detail? Um, I mean, maybe that's it. Part of the problem is they bring attention to those things. Um, I mean, like, can, the, you, can you give an example? Cause... Uh, their, their game has no UI at all. We keep seeing in, like stuff of their game and then um, like they're basically... So, like, there are these cuts between scenes that's meant to be, like, footage from their game um, that is, like, just, like, a cutscene thing. But then there's all... And that's, like, whatever. But then there are also, like, whole story elements where it's, like, now Ian is gonna go into the game in this Colosseum thing that we made for this, and uh, he has his avatar. And, like, well, okay, like, that's an even better example. At one person... At one point... Like, a player says, like, well, I'll get my avatar to go blah, blah, blah. I've never heard a gamer speak that way. Um, well, this is my avatar. Nobody... Am I wrong here? Nobody says that. Um, do you know? Like, my character. My guy. My dude. My chick. Whatever. I've never heard someone talk about, yeah. my avatar does this. Um, the best ones I've ever heard um, was... I can't remember what I was playing. It might have been, actually, me when I was, like, ten years old watching my friend play EverQuest, mm -hmm. which I never played. And I remember, it might have been that, but there was a uh, a player call, who'd call himself Mr. Mofo, mm -hmm. and he would just refer to himself as Mr. Mofo. Like, mm -hmm. Mr. Mofo is now going to go over here. Yeah. That was very funny. Anyway. Yeah. The other example I thought of was when Poodie Shoe is playing a game, and you can see him, and he's just mashing buttons, right? There, that happens multiple times, where it shows the screen... And it's just like a character just like walking and then cut back to the actor and they're doing this. Like just play like, something. Just, yeah, just just don't just play something. This is basic. E even yeah. if you don't even if you've never touched it, like just go through the tutorial or whatever and just mm -hmm. that looks way, you know. Yeah, that that's very distracting to me. Um It's it's like if you <laughs> It's like if you made a movie uh where you have like a scene in an office but you've like no concept of typing. So you just have a load of people going. There, it was like that during some of the Ding. points where they're talking about coding, where yes. um, there's bits where Poppy, who's probably the best character, um, is like, "Now let me just um, yeah, adjust but... this animation for you," and she goes, Ch -ch 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 -ch. "And what? You just changed a walk cycle by doing this? 
Um, like, it's pretty basic. Now, I just want to say, none of that would make any difference whatsoever if it were really funny. I wouldn't be focused on these things, but there's just nothing else to focus on when there are no jokes. If anything, they comedy. should have let, let into it more. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Tell me more. Like, uh... Well, if anything, it should have been like, yeah, let me just code that for you and just... <laughs> Making that yeah. sound. Like Even like, the, the, we see we see what's on his screen and it's just the Matrix numbers coming down. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, like, don't like bother or like as much with that, yeah. Ian, like, calls out Poppy in the middle of the night and tells her to do something. She's like, that's going to take eight hours of coding. Mm -hmm. And then she just goes into a room and tells Chat GPT to do it. Mm -hmm. I, like, I don't know, you could have so, gone way, yeah. way more bonkers with it. Yeah, instead of like trying to do this middle ground of like, you know, there's so much focus on, I mean the whole show is about this game studio and their game, and so that's what makes it like really distracting. Uh, also there's like 20 people working at this studio, yeah. and they're meant to have 12 million players, bigger than Blizzard, who I'm pretty sure has like between 100 and 300 employees at any, any given time, uh, and they're not in their prime, their heyday of making games. Um, just very weird uh, and again I wouldn't care if it weren't so critical like like okay there are these um these two chicks who are play testers and they have like their own little like like sphere and there's just two of them and they're just sitting playing a game like not you know play testing just just playing very weird like that's if it were funny I wouldn't have cared but because there's nothing else to like really grab on to I just found myself like focusing on that shit. Like that's not how studios work. That's not how game development works. You know, Did you not any of it funny? I fucking know. No, there was funny stuff, and that's what made it more frustrating. When there would be like a joke that was funny, um, and then like loads of jokes that just do not land. Do you know what I mean? And then like that whole one-off episode, episode five, there were like no jokes in that. Yeah. It was like a very serious, like drama for like an hour about these characters I don't give two shits about who never come back. I'm pretty sure. And why? Yeah. 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 Um, so started out really hating the first episode. Characters kind of grew on me a bit. And then that in itself became even more fucking frustrating as we went through it. Yeah, I definitely don't hate it, but uh, I... Yeah. Yeah. Yep. What do we have left? Um, I just say waste of time, don't bother. Uh, it's not weird in like a fun way. Um, really. Yeah. That's my opinion. Three months free is not that great a deal. I know, you were saying, well, like, we were... I remember it was when we were watching that or Silo or something else. You were like, I know we got this for free, but I want a refund anyway. Give me ten dollars. <laughs> yes. Um, and then that leads into something we watched on Apple TV Plus that we actually did kind of like. Yeah. Would you like a quick break first? I'm fine. Can I have a quick break first? No. Five minutes later. Okay, so Twas the Night Before Christmas. Yes, the one thing worth watching that we found. Yes. On Apple TV Plus. <clears throat> a documentary, just one documentary, not a series. It's only like an hour and a half long, which I really appreciate. It tells the story concisely. It's about this dude, Jeremy Morris, I believe was his name, uh, who is a lawyer. And um, so it starts out. Uh, talking about it being a dispute between this guy, this lawyer Morris, and his homeowners association of his neighborhood that led to like lawsuits over a Christmas display was how it was like kind of just first presented. Um, and it was interesting because it starts out with him just talking about, yeah, you know, I want to do this Christmas thing in my neighborhood and, you know, we made cotton candy for kids and hot chocolate and blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, that's, that's, sounds alright. Um, and then very quickly realizing, no, it's way more than that, and this guy is kind of a psychopath. Uh, so w what he used to do in his old neighborhood, I suppose, was uh, since being a child, he's been obsessed with Christmas lights mm -hmm. and putting them up, and every year in his old house, they got bigger and bigger and bigger until it became like an event mm -hmm. where people would like turn up to see him turn on his Christmas lights mm -hmm. uh, because they're deranged. 
and then he moved and he deliberately moved outside of the city limits uh, to a place yeah which was part of an HOA and he went through the HOA agreement before he bought the house and thought I can get away with this and then he lived in this suburban house and tried to and did put on a massive massive Christmas display where they were bussing in hundreds of people. At one point they said up to 5,000 people were there at a given time. At any given time? And it went on for several at days. At any given time? Uh, like at the peak of it, I think. But yeah, up to 5,000 people in this tiny suburban neighborhood and the... Uh, at any given time? That doesn't make sense. Maybe not at any given time, but they did say that like 5,000 at one point. There were like 5,000 people. In one day or people. something. Yeah. Um, and these like neighborhood and... Um, so, the HOA and the neighbors, like, do not like this. They don't want all these, like, people, like, surrounding their house, making noise at all hours of the night. They're, like, there's, like, bands there and, like, people, like, all kinds of loud, crazy shit that I think most people would not want right outside their house. Um, but the HOA had to figure out how to, like, tell him, no, we don't think you can do this. And they wrote him a letter back, and one particular line in that letter was um, also not everybody in the neighborhood is Christian, so we don't know what kind of problems that that could bring about. And then he gloms onto this and creates a media frenzy over how the neighborhood association hates Christians and is uh, doing a war on Christmas, even though like the HOA president's husband is a pastor and yeah. everybody's... And other know. people have Christmas lights yes. as well. And it w wasn't the Christmas lights weren't the problem. The the problem was it's like like a runway tower or something. I mean, it's yeah. just like glowing. Yes. Um, and the noise and, um, yeah, people being like bussing in from churches like around the country and parking their buses in the middle of the street so people can't get to their houses. Yeah, blocking the um, road. Blocking the road and stuff. And um, as it goes on, it comes across, you start to get the sense that maybe he planned all of this. Um and created this like media furor and it just gets crazier as it goes on he talks about like he wants to be a senator and he could be president one day and um just mental uh yeah it, it, it's i mean i was gonna say it's not worth getting apple for but free is free if you get a free subscription and cancel it immediately so you won't accidentally be charged i'd recommend watching this because it was interesting we get a lot of I wouldn't say behind the scenes exactly, but a lot of um, him being him with his family. And he's a piece of shit. Yeah. He is a fucking rude, abusive piece of shit. Yeah. And he's led his wife down this uh, path of stress and financial insecurity where if they don't win, they're going to lose their house. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, she's supporting him, but she's like... I just want a normal life. Yeah, and yes, yeah, so there's a lot of him going on about how the um, Neighborhood Association is, uh, you know, he's just standing up to them. This is about freedom and America and, uh, and religious freedom uh, and, like, turning it into this whole thing over some fucking Christmas lights. Like, and not to mention the fact that, like, just the fact that he, like, picked this house specifically to make it out of the city limits so they couldn't try to shut him down for not having a permit for an event. Um, and wanted to do all this, like, and then still bought the house after they were like, no, we don't really want to do that. And it's like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. And like immediately sues them. Um, it comes across like he's a psycho who planned all this out as some kind of like weird PR thing for himself. I don't, that's what I felt. Did you agree with that? Yes, I think so. Uh, yeah. uh, and I suppose the question for me was, yeah, did he plan it as in, like, did he lay there one night and think, well, then I would do that and then I would do that. Or is this kind of impulse driven yeah. where there is a part of him that knows where this will go? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. he is a lawyer. Yeah. And, um, I mean, yeah. Like, so first of all, I'll say this is, um, the first time in my life I've ever thought like I'm on the side of the homeowners association in this neighborhood. Um, because he kept bringing up things like, okay, so he started stalking people around the neighborhood, taking pictures of them violating the HOA agreement. 
Um, things like having like a you know non-approved like decoration on the house, or one is an elderly lady who has three dogs, and the HOA says you're only supposed to have two. So he's like taking pictures of these, of these people and then presenting that as like, see, this shows that they're anti-Christian because they don't enforce, and it actually makes them look like they are reasonable. Yeah. You know, like they're not enforcing all kinds of these little things. It doesn't really matter. They just don't want this insane noise outside their house when they have to go to work in the morning. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that, I don't know if more often than not or whatever, but I imagine there are quite a few HOAs where some little Hitler has seized power. But if you think about it sort of optimistically, that big wad of paper isn't there for you to follow. It is there for someone to legally use against you if you are being a nuisance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they can actually say, like, yeah, you can't have four washing machines on your front lawn, dickhead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I'd never fucking live in a nature way. That sounds God, like no. a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah. Um, tell me what color to paint my house. But yeah, I was on the side of the HOA in this. Yeah. And you said um, some people just need a second or nops. Oh, um, no, what I said was after we'd gotten probably got like two thirds in like and things were kind of just kept getting worse and you start seeing more of him behind the scenes like there's this bit where he like knows that the crew is recording and he's trying to like say something to his wife about like in the kitchen about like, now listen, what this is really about. And then his kid will make a noise and he starts like freaking out and then restarts to say the same thing. Like he's like scripted this in his head and just getting like more and more pissed off that children make noise. Um, and anyway, as it went on, what I said to you was, um, he needs to get his shit kicked in. Um, cause this doesn't seem like the That's kind of person that, uh, in, a, in a video game. Legal. Yeah. Um, uh, because this guy's never gonna learn anything. Um, it was fascinating and infuriating, this dude. Um, because he, it... Sorry. I'm just gonna say, because it it wasn't just, like, being frustrating, but he ended up... Because he's a lawyer, he can, like, file lawsuits all he wants. It doesn't really cost him anything. Um, and there are, like, elderly people on Social Security in this neighborhood who have, you know, been sued to the point where they're not going to be able to survive. They could lose their house over this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what a piece of shit. Um, and this, but... Uh, God, I don't even know what else to say about it. Just, um... Like, he, like, intentionally stokes, like, a media furor over, like, this is a war furor. on Chris... Furor. 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 Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Over Did you ever hear about uh, that Al Capone uh, associate who went on trial and they said, the lawyer said to him, and in the shootout, you, you were present? And he's like, yeah. And the lawyer says, and you were shot in the fracas? And the gangster says, no, I was shot in the abdomen. No, I don't know what you're referencing. Never mind. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, just creating this whole thing where he's on like media talking about this is anti-Christian, and um, he his lawsuit was based on the idea that this was a discrimination lawsuit, um, that they discriminated against him uh, for being a Christian, um, when like most people in the neighborhood are Christian and um, you know have their own Christmas lights and do Christmas stuff. They just don't want. Um, people screaming and, you know, pissing on their lawn and shit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. They've chosen to live there in that quiet neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, fascinating to get me on the side of an HOA. Yeah. yeah. So, that was pretty good. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Worth watching. What's next? Um, uh, next, last thing on the list. Another thing that we actually liked that we've seen recently. Squid Game. Ah, but which Squid Game? Not that game show thing. That's um, where we started. Yeah, because I had seen reports about, like, the Squid Game, the challenge show that's just come out on Netflix. Yeah. Um, possibly getting sued over, like, people like getting hypothermia and, like, stuff like that on set. Right. Um, and people kind of poo-pooing the show over them, like, spending a lot of time making fun of people with 
Um, some of them like have crushing debt, you know, and things like that that they're just trying to get out of. Um, so that's what drew my interest. And we're like, okay, let's start that. I think we watched two of them. We watched four of them. Did we? Shit. Yeah. Um, and then kind of decided, well, like this is lame, but I actually am kind of curious to see Squid Game now and to not spoil it for myself based on this fucking garbage. So You really didn't like it? The game show thing? No. Um, it's pretty dystopian, really. Very dystopian, yeah, and um, also just kind of, it devolved very quickly into, like, just survivor stuff. Let's now create a team, you know, to work together against the other, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking that the, the problem kind of with it, which is inevitable, is, is, yeah, it ends up, like you said, like Survivor, where it's sort of like backsteppy and bitchy, like mm. a playground. And I've seen that. I've seen lots of that. And yeah. the the problem you can't solve, and obviously in Squid Game it is like this, is the real, the real backing is violence. Mm -hmm. You can't do that in a game like this. Mm -hmm. but, Which is, I'm assuming why they changed some of the games and stuff as well. Yeah. Because um, you just have to. Um, so, so uh, go on. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I thought that the well, I thought that the TV show, game show, uh, completely missed the point of the original, and mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of, I mean, gross. Yeah. Really gross. I would agree with that. Yes. Um, but the TV show we watched, and I really liked it. What did you think? Me too. I really liked it. We watched a ton of it yesterday. Yeah. Um, we watched all of it. Yeah. Yesterday, or maybe the last uh, two days. The last two days, yeah. Really uh, powered through because... Yeah. Yeah, I really liked it. I really I really did. And um, obviously didn't see it when it came out. Mm. But... Um, I would... How would you... Well, how would you sum it up? It's... Okay. Um, it's a... Um, Korean series about... It's, it's um, shot in Technicolor. Yes. Um, about a uh, dude. Uh, I'll say straight up, I don't remember anybody's name in the series. Um, I remember, you, you see, I think as well, I might be wrong here, I think Korean names, the family name comes first. Yes. So Kang, I remember her, but that's mm -hmm. her last name. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I find a lot of the names very difficult to pronounce even when I do know them. Like, yeah. Was it Sang Yu, Sang Woo? Yeah, so Same thing. Yeah. I, four, five, six. Yeah. Yes, four, five, six. We're calling him. Um, uh, is uh, we kind of meet him first. He's a dude who's in massive amount of debt to like some, it's like gambling debt basically. Um, and uh, his mom isn't doing great. She's got medical problems. Um, and he kind of gets an offer to go to these games where he could win money. Um, and that's the Squid Game, and he turns up, and there's like 400 other people there. 455 other and, people. Um, yes, and they say that all of you have like shitloads of debt, um, and we're gonna give you the opportunity to blah 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 blah. And then they don't actually tell them like the money that they could win straight away. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a, you know, pretty much what you'd expect, and this is kind of why we didn't. I think we didn't watch it already, because I think we were both just like, well. I mean, I can see what that'll be, and... It's a game show where people die. Yeah, like, uh, what can you possibly, you know, how could that possibly be interesting? But it was. Um, I... What are some things that you liked about it? Some well, else? it isn't just about that. It's not just about will they get through, and, you know, there can be only one, and who will it be? Mm. You can kind of guess. Mm. But, um... It's not just about that, it's about there's a lot of subterfuge going on within the, the staff of the games and mm -hmm. it definitely makes clear that it wants you to wonder why this is going on and for whose benefit. Mm -hmm. And um, it doesn't answer those questions, but it leaves it open for a second series that I hope would, mm -hmm. and I hope, a uh, second season, mm -hmm. and I hope would be an end. Mm -hmm. I hope they don't make three. Or anything yeah, like I get yet. you. I'd also like to see the story conclude. Um, I thought it was with yeah. how it left off and everything. You know, I 
Um, because <clears throat> often when I watch, like, a series, I find myself getting really frustrated when there's, like, sort of a cliffhanger -y type of thing. And they keep but... deferring the the goat they're chasing, like in The Boys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Where it's, yeah. I mean, kind of in The Shield as well, which I liked, speaking of Walton Goggins. Mm -hmm. They did the same thing of, like, well, you know, next season, our oh, Vic is going to have his goose cooked with that Armenian money train, and mm -hmm. then the whole season... It's like about fucking Danny's pregnancy for nine episodes, mm -hmm. and, and then we get like a couple of story episodes, and then but next season, mm -hmm. I kind of was glad it didn't do that mm -hmm. um, without answering really anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is the two answer? It's you know, it's rich people. Yeah, you can you can, you can guess from the get go what it is. Yeah, it's not that um, way. It doesn't it doesn't those... really try to hide it or you know or be coy about it like you know we do eventually meet the vips and yeah just exactly what you'd expect um you know some rich people betting on who's gonna win um you know rat race style yeah um i i think i found that bit the most unconvincing yeah that these dudes would come in and wear these um hotline miami masks because they were so clownish you mean yeah, yeah and VIPs. and they were so far away from the action, like looking through opera glasses. Mm -hmm. It's like if you said to me, "You can go there and look through opera glasses and watch it," or you can not bother getting on the plane and getting dressed and mm -hmm. watch it in your yeah. bedroom. Yeah, because they make it clear that they watch it on screens at home. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. I don't really mind the clownishness of the the VIPs, like. Um, you know, I can't even really say why, I just didn't mind. And they really weren't, like, important to the story, either, um, in the end, do you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, but yeah, I guess one thing I'll say about it is, after we watched the first episode, and then we're kind of, like, i say, like, probably partway through episode two is where I started to kind of get hooked a little bit, um, because it's kind of unexpected, where they go in and do the first round Spoiler of the game... Warning. Spoiler warning, it's like fucking, I don't know how old, but, um, spoiler warning, after the first kind of round of the game, um, there's like a clause in their little agreement about taking part in the games that's, uh, with a majority vote, everybody can vote to end the games, and none of you will get any of the prize money, which stacks up per person died, it adds like another, I can't remember what it was, however many thousands of won. I thought it was 46 billion. It was 46, like 46 billion total, oh, I guess. okay, yeah, right. Um, it's 100 million per person. Yeah, something like that, yeah. It goes up each time um, that somebody dies uh, or is kicked out or whatever. Um, so they go in for, like, the first round, they take this vote, and everybody's like, no, let's go. You know, after, like, half the people die in the first game. Well, it's, um, yeah, it's a very narrow vote. Yeah, it's very narrow. Uh, they came down to one vote in the end, I but believe. They vote to uh, quit. They vote to quit. Go back out, and then we rejoin 456 in the real world, and um, he kind of uh, comes to the conclusion, like, um, you know, like, what was the one character saying? Like, it's hell out there, too, so may as well you know, come in here. And, like, a lot of the people end up coming back then. Yeah, it's like 187 um, out of 201 survivors or something. Yeah, like, at the end of episode two, coming yeah. back in to rejoin the games. Yeah. Um... And that was kind of unexpected, but I'm glad I did it because there was, like, a good build-up to then... Because once they're back in, like, they're in. Um, and I was starting to worry, like, okay, we'll have a couple good episodes, and then I bet it could, you know, a lot of shows do this, start slowing down toward the middle, getting saggy, focusing just on, like, drama stuff, uh, you know, with mm -hmm. very little... You know, wasting time. Yeah, a lot of time wasting. Um, and I actually feel like it didn't. I actually felt like... It made pretty good use of its time. Yeah. There was plenty of dramatic stuff, and it worked. Um, but it also was, like, pacey. Things were happening. Yeah. You know. And I liked the characters. Yeah, I liked the characters, too. And I thought um, the humor really worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I liked a lot of the characters. Um, even the... Even old man. Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> a number of characters where it's, like, you know, it kind of... Uh, it kind of, like, ad addresses this sort of issue of, like... Um, you know, what... I guess what I'm trying to say is there was nuance to the morality of some of the characters yeah. that I appreciated. Not everybody was... It wasn't like, you know, there's like just straight up bad guys, yeah. straight up good guys. Like, everybody's doing some 
naughty shit in here, um, which yeah. I liked. Um, and I also really loved... Um, see, what's interesting, too, is that there are these other kind of, like, little strings of side stories that were interesting, too. Like, there's a, a cop, this Korean cop, whose brother went missing, um, and he kind of works out that people are, um, through this business card that he found from his brother. That they used to recruit. That they used to recruit. And more or less, he uses this to um, find um, where all these players are going back into the game and kind of sneaks onto the island. Um, and then, as you were saying, like, I love this guy, solid snaking around here. Yeah. Um, I really loved seeing him. I was like, yay, Korean cop. I have my own names for everybody. The first thing he does is get out of the car, kill someone, take their uniform, and then just throw the... And he doesn't kill them, he knocks them out. Yeah. He just throws their unconscious body into the sea to with die. His, with his with police his... ID on yeah. it. Yeah, which came back later. Balls um, on this guy. The balls on this guy. Yeah, and like goes in and, um... Yeah, the, where he like just switches his mask. Uh, yeah. He hitman's about as well as <laughs> Solid Snake. He does about. a yeah, he does a good hitman Solid Snake thing throughout. Yeah. Um, that was believable. To I me was too. expecting him to do the VIP mask. I was expecting that too. At some point, he'd um, wear the VIP mask or our main villain dude mask. But I mean, we find out later Isaac why that's not mask. the case. Yeah. Um, yeah, some really wacky sets and costumes that. Uh, Surprisingly worked really well for me like those goofy elements. I think added to it for me um, Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah It's got quite a lot to say it does yeah, and it, and it incorporates that really well like it has these ever-present themes throughout um, You know Without anybody breaking down into like a big monologue about it and the characters are just well written and exist well on their own within a story that's pretty well put together, but also has these underlying themes. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it too. Well, there we go. Yeah. Is this our last episode this year? Or definitely before Christmas? Yeah, so... Um, well... We definitely decided uh, while the special things are going on later... This month. The 12 days is coming back. And during the 12 days, I think we said we won't do dead air. Just because it's too much. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know, I guess... I could have done all of the 12 days at any time during this year. Fuck that. If I'm doing that, I'll do it the, I'll do it the fucking night. I'll do it the day off. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. Do you think we'll be back next week? Because that'll be, that'll be, what, like a few days before the first 12 days starts? I guess we'll discuss. Yeah. <coughs> Alright, I guess I'll just say, you might see us next week, you might not. We'll be getting ready for the 12 days, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and then during the 12 days, yeah, you won't see us. Merry Christmas. What a happy year. Yay. <clears throat> huh? Christmas time is the time of year. Now let me tell you all about Kwanzaa. Alright then, thanks very much. Yep, thanks. Bye.